All right, so good evening everyone once again. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. And tonight I wanted to talk about the importance of goals. Is there anyone here tonight who really has never heard anything about goals? Or I mean, as far as um, putting them into practice in your training? And does it, does it even make sense to you how a goal might be able to be helpful to you as a trader? Anyone here been kind of confused on that or how you even go about setting a goal in trading? Well, we're going to talk about that tonight, hopefully resolve some of those issues for you and give you some ideas on how you can improve your trading with a little bit of planning. Okay. So let's start off right here. You know, there's an old saying out there, you know, the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? And it's really the same way with growing a trading account. Have you guys ever thought much about the plan or the pathway that you're taking to grow your trading account? That's one of the key elements of being successful in trading is having that plan, having that focus with some ideas, some goals. A lot of folks who enter trading, they enter trading with this idea of, hey, always swinging for the home run trade, always trying to hit the big winner, okay? But never really thinking about the consistency and the importance of consistency in their trading. Certainly, there's folks out there who have um, the tolerance for risk to risk it all and try to win big. Is there anyone here that just has no problem with risking everything you've got to try and win big? Probably not, right? There's not too many of us that have that kind of risk tolerance. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people struggle in trading. Uh, Gwen, yeah, we'll talk about we'll talk about that. Um, in in how you want to think about um, setting that goal, okay? And talk about how we well, what's that next bite? that we need to take to eat that annual goal. You know, what what do we do to start moving forward? And, you know, I, I talk about this quite a bit. And, you know, I work with a lot of people from around the world in trading and, and things like that. And I run into a lot of folks who, well, they'll even argue with me. that I would not take a trade just to make a hundred bucks. Okay. And I always ask this question, you know, if you're walking down the street, are you telling me you wouldn't stop and bend over that you're too proud to stop and bend over and pick up that hundred dollar bill? And when we think about our trading overall, how many in here would admit that you have just let hundreds of dollars blow past you on the sidewalk because you failed to take profits? Okay. Failing to take profits is one of the leading causes when I work with people One of the leading causes that they don't have a good win-loss ratio in their trading. Okay, because they refuse to take a profit. You know, guys, there's something really, really key here, and it's it's so fundamental. It's it's it almost sounds silly to say it, but one of the key elements of being successful in trading is getting comfortable with taking profits. Okay, so what kind of profits do we have to achieve to be able to reach some goals, to reach that level 
that makes sense for you? Are you letting greed get in the way of your success? How many hundred dollar bills have you let blow by? What would your trading account look like had you just stopped and taken the profit? How much different would it be? How many of you would say right now that initially the trades you put on, a lot of the trades that you put on initially, you're right on direction. They made money at some point in time. But a lot of your losing trades are those trades where you failed to take those smaller profits because we're just too proud. We want the bigger win. Right? So we have to get over that. And the only way we can get over that is we have to get over that by putting together some idea, a plan with some goals in mind. Okay? So if you have ever thought about your trading and you start thinking about what you truly want to achieve, it's overwhelming, right? Let's think about, I'm, I'm going to kind of go with options trading tonight. I'm the options guy. Um, and kind of go with an options idea. Does anyone think that, well, let me ask you this. Is there anyone here that would be willing to play along with me tonight? Give me your... Um, what's the size of your trading account and we'll play along here and see what we can come up with on um, an idea on how we set some goals anyone want to give me that just give me you don't have to give me Jim Jim got in there first 25k okay now I want everyone else to follow along with this because this isn't really this isn't rocket science okay this is pretty simple stuff okay so let's take $25,000 if we take that $25,000 account let's think about what we need to achieve what we want to achieve that would make us feel pretty successful okay in our trading now with options does anyone think a 20 percent return at the end of the year would be possible how many in here have ever received or done better than a 20 percent return year over year over year You've had a 20% return. Have you done it year over year over year? See, there's no money manager that I know of that does that consistently out there in the world. If there was, everybody put their money with them because you guys know at 20% a year, you double your account every three and a half years. Okay. You've watched me do it. Well, one of the reasons I've been successful in doing that, guys, is because I put a plan together. So let me ask you this real simple question. If we take that 25,000 and we use 20%, okay? We use 20%. How much do we need to make to make a 20% return on a year. You guys got your calculator handy? Okay. Okay, so we need $5,000, right? That's what we're shooting for. Now, some folks will look at this, and I, I mean, anybody would look at with a $25,000 account, look at that and say, that's a pretty big stretch. It's achievable, right? Everybody, we wouldn't be trading if we didn't think it was achievable. Okay, but let's think about that for a second. All right, that's a pretty big lump because we haven't done it before on a consistent basis. How are we going to gain some consistency with this? 
So let's take that 5,000 here. There's a, that's our annual goal. That's what we're shooting for. So what do we have to do monthly? Monthly, we need to make, I'm just gonna round this up. We, we need to make about 100, I mean, 420 bucks a month, right? Let me ask you, um, the guys who, who posted 25,000, have you guys ever had trades that had more than $420 a month in those trades but never took it? Or in your account? had trades that added up to $420 and never took it. Okay. One of the reasons that occurs is we never think about what our goals are. Would you guys agree in a market like we have right now, if you have $420 in profits in your account at the close of the day, are you 100% confident that that $420 will still be there tomorrow? And this market, kind of scary, right? So why wouldn't we take those profits? Because what we're trying to do is we're trying, we're trying to be a superhero trader. We want the really big win. We're always trying to hit home runs instead of working for some base hits. Okay, and I'm not saying you shouldn't shoot for a home run from time to time or anything like that. But let's think about this, guys. If we take that monthly goal, divide that by four, what do we get? Yeah, 105 bucks. We need to be shooting for $105 a week. Does anybody think that's achievable? Okay, how many of you would say that that has been achieved before, but you didn't pick up that $100 bill because you wanted more and turned it into a loss? Right? We've all done that as traders, right? And one of the reasons that occurs is because we don't have a plan to succeed. Okay, let me ask you this, guys. You look at that and say, well, wait a minute, $100, $105, that might be just, um, that might be hard for me to do. How many of you think you could do two trades? Two trades that can get you 60 bucks in one week. Do you guys think it'd be that hard to find a trade that could make you 60 bucks? Easy, there you go. Charlie, easy. So let me ask you this question. If two of these trades is going to beat your goal at $60, why is it that everybody's so doggone stubborn about taking a profit? If we know this is where we're trying to go, that this 20% return will double this account in three and a half years, why don't we go after some of the easy trades? Why aren't we doing that? I get these folks all the time that puff out their chest and they just get really almost indignant about it. I'm not trading for no $50 or $100. That's ridiculous. Why would I do that? Well, for 20% return a year. That's why. That's why we do that. Okay. Now, let me ask you this, guys. If we need to find two trades to make us 60 bucks so that we can blow away our goals, if we can make two trades and collect $60 on those trades, 
can we be pretty darn picky every week about the trades we take? Now, first off, that should take some pressure off of you, right? How many of you spend your day racing around trying to find every trade, everything that's popping in the market? Do you guys think you could have a list of 75, 100 stocks that are trending? And you could go through those 75 or 100 stocks and find two on a weekly basis. That could make you 60 bucks a piece. Yeah. So what we're doing to ourselves, we, what we do to ourselves oftentimes is we put ourselves in a situation where we, we really don't have a plan to win. We have this idea of, hey, we just want to make a bunch of money. Okay, but we don't have a plan that gets us any consistency in our trading. The other thing that I wanna say is, let's say we have that really good week in the market. Do you have to stop when you reach your weekly goal? If the market's giving up money and giving up really good trades, do you have to stop? No, you can keep trading, right? We have a member in our room. Um, he goes by John L. Well, you want to be pickier about the trades, Jim, but you probably shouldn't stop. There's sometimes when the market really likes, is really wet, setting up well for good trades, and then there's times when we need to pull back. Okay? For example, the current market condition, do you guys think that it would be wise for us to pull back and do less trading right now. We have a massive amount of news coming at us, all kinds of stuff going on. It might be wise for us during this period of time where, we, where our odds of winning aren't good to be able to pull back. So if we're gonna have those periods in the market where we wanna pull back, we wanna make sure when those periods in the market are really doing well for us, that we actually continue to trade. We keep moving this along. Okay. So what I want, the reason I'm saying that, guys, is not because I'm trying to press you to trade more. You can certainly stop. Okay. You can certainly stop and make your goal. There's no problem with that. Okay, I'm not trying to say, hey, you have to get out there and find four or five or six trades on a good week in the market. You don't have to. But the reason I want to show you that is show you that when those markets are doing that kind of thing, you can actually go way beyond your goals. You can beat them to death. The guy in our room that I was talking about, he goes, goes by John L., He's like six or seven months ahead of his goals now because he had a really good month a month ago. He's way ahead of his goals. And here's the cool thing. Would you guys agree that the market this year has been pretty challenging? Been a kind of challenging, volatile, goofy, weird market, hasn't it? But this guy, hasn't missed a goal this year. In fact, one month, he reported to the entire room that he had made 12 trades, excuse me, 13 trades. He'd made 13 total trades, 12 were winners. Does that seem like a logical ratio? Wouldn't that be cool? You know how he had 12 winners? Because his average winning trade was $67. At the end of the month, figure that up guys, what did he make? 
He was trading a sub $10,000 account and he grew his account, made over $1,000 that month. Just being really careful and cautious and always taking profits. Consistency to take profits. Okay? Now, the way he blew his goals away is he had a, um, there was a month there where he had some trades on that just went boom, way past his goal and he was able to take really big gains. That happens right? You catch that trade from time to time that just really blows and goes. Okay? But he bagged that money. And he blew away his goals. Okay? Now, when I go over stuff like this, I want to ask you guys, first off, does this get, give some of you some hope? Because we can actually create something that looks logical and looks reasonable that anybody can do this, right? We don't even have to be a superhero trader to do this, right? We don't have to risk big to make 60 bucks on an option contract, right? We don't have to do anything fancy, in fact, what we could really do is say, okay, I'm just gonna find a list of stocks. I'm gonna find a good list of stocks that we wanna look for a few things. First off, if we're gonna trade options, okay, they need to have good options, right? How many of you have looked at option, or you're looking for an option trade, and you look at a stock because you're chasing around all kinds of stocks, Okay, and then you go look for some options on the stock and the options are terrible. You just wasted time, right? There's not an option in there to be had. They're, they're ridiculous. Some of them don't even trade options. And yet we're wasting our time chasing those trades. Why do that? If we're going to be an option trader. Let's build a list of stocks that have quality options. Not only do they have options, but they have reasonable open interest. They have reasonable bid ask spreads. Okay? Because why would we waste our time trading something that has bid ask spreads that's ridiculous? We see them all the time, right? There's very little people, there's very few people trading them. The market makers spread out the bid ass huge. But we're still wasting our time looking at that chart trying to create an option trade. Not very efficient, is it? So why don't we create a list, a qualified list of good quality stocks that have options? Okay, why don't we create a list of good quality stocks that are trending? One thing I learned a long, long time ago when I was ready to quit trading options, guys, I came up, I was staring at my screens wondering how in the world I could have screwed this up so bad. And I was getting ready to quit in my trading and I started noticing all of these stocks that are in trends, big trends. And I wondered how in the world could I be losing money when all around me there were stocks that were trending, why wasn't I in any of them? Why hadn't I traded any of them? You ever wonder that, guys? Because we're not looking for them. What we're doing, most what most people are doing, and you tell me if I'm wrong, they're looking at the hard right edge and they're looking for that one big can, that beautiful can. Oh, that's it right there. That's the one right there. That's the trade. But they don't look at any part of that chart that's out here. 
they're chasing around this. It's not working, is it? I know because I've been there. So one of the things that I learned long ago is one, one step to do is trade stocks that are in a trend. So I actively search for stocks in a trend and I create a list of trending stocks that have good options. And then I just simply wait for the next entry into that trend. Literally, guys, um, if you're brand new here, never heard me say this before, anyone in RWO or Hit Run Candlesticks will tell you that I say this all the time. And, and they will confirm to you that that's what I do. I literally wait for the trade to come to me. I mark up the chart, I set an alert, and I make the trade come to me. I don't chase the trade. I know I'm looking at a stock with a good trend and I know I'm looking at a stock with good options. What about the price of stocks? How many of you guys have ever chased around stocks? You're always chasing that candle pattern and you're wasting time with stocks that you can't afford. Why spend your time looking at Amazon if you can't chase it, if you can't trade it? If that's out of your wheelhouse, don't even have it on your list. You don't need to waste a second on that chart. Once you create that good quality watch list, your job every day then is to manage that watch list. Stocks that stop trending get tossed out of the, out of the chart, out of the list. New stocks that come in that you check out, make sure that they have good options, those go onto the list every week, every day. That's your job because that's where your money is going to come from. Okay, and then we're going to have this plan that says this is what I'm working for. I'm working for X amount of dollars in my trades because I know if I maintain that consistency, I have an opportunity to reach my goals. Right? If I don't work for consistent, let me ask you guys a question. Do your bills come to your house pretty consistently all the time? Pretty much, right? So if we're gonna be full-time traders, if we wanna be have a career in trading, we've gotta figure out how to make consistent dollars as well, right? We've got so much we have to cover. Now, do you guys see how what we're trying to do here is we're trying to put together a plan that's actually a plan of business? This is a business plan. This is giving us a framework, a pathway to reach our goals. See, if we don't have that, if we don't have the discipline to follow a plan, if we don't know where we're starting, and sadly, a lot of people don't know where they're starting, and they don't know where they're going. They know that they wanna make money. They know that they wanna get rich. But unless you have a plan that can actually get you there, it's a fantasy. Is this making some sense, guys? We have to have a logical, thought-out process of how we're actually going to achieve this. If you walked into a bank and said, hey, loan me $25,000, I'm pretty sure I can make money in the market. The banker's gonna ask you how you plan to do that. They're gonna want a plan. If you say, well, I took this class and I'm just pretty sure I can do it, how long do you think it'll take before he says, nah, see you later, come back when you have more of an idea what you're, how you're gonna pay us back? 
right? Just like any other business, they have to ha have a plan on how they're going to get there. And that's why goals matter, guys. If we can have an idea of what we're trying to achieve, and by the way, on my desktop, every single day and every single Sunday, I fill out another one of these. I fill out my plan. Every Sunday before the market opens in my preparation, I come in here, I tear off, or print off another sheet. Okay. I write down my annual goal, my monthly goal, my weekly goal, my average trade size, and my tolerance to risk per trade. I know that on every single trade sheet that I have, it sits on my desk every single day. It's right here. Okay, that keeps me focused and gives me a purpose in my trading. Can you guys see how that gives you focus? By having that plan out there in front of you, this is what I'm here to do today. This is what I'm here to achieve. It gives me purpose to my work day, what I'm supposed to be doing where my focus should be. It doesn't necessarily tell me that I need to hit a home run trade today, right? My watch list changes every week, Lauren, because, and you guys see me do this every day, market opens, I'm going through stocks, right? I'm going through stocks, I'm marking them up, putting things on the list. If something has fallen out of trend, and is no longer moving with the market, I kick it out of the list. I don't want to waste any time with it. Okay. You guys know that I use the LTA scanning software. And every Sunday, I take my watch list my current watch list because I've been adapting it all week, I've been modifying it all week. Every Sunday, I load it into the LTA scanner so that the only thing I'm looking for are stocks that I've already pre-qualified. Does that make sense? And I'll tell you guys, that's the biggest part of my job. That's the work that I have to do. Okay, from there on out, with the LTA scanner, I don't even have to search through that list. The LTA scanner just brings me the trades. But from that point on, my job is now to be disciplined to my plan and focused on my goals. See, it gives me structure to my day. It gives me structure to what I'm supposed to be doing today. Isn't it true, guys, that it's easy to get up in the morning, you know, meander into your computer. You may not have been gotten dressed yet. That's okay. Don't have to be dressed to be a trader, right? But you do have to be awake and you do have to be focused. How many here will admit that you sat down at the computer, turned that computer on just before the market opens, and you're trying to make decisions on trading immediately. Do you really think you're ready to trade? Do you think you're prepared to go to battle with some of the best people in the business? Probably not, right? Uh, Mike, it will go in a put list if the market is trending down. Okay. See, one of my rules is I trade stocks that are trending, but I trade stocks that are trending with the direction of the market. Have you guys ever heard of someone that got rich trading by counter trend trading all the time, trying to pick the tops or bottoms?
Yeah, which is fine, Malcolm. Yeah, I get that. Do your work the night before. But the thing is, you're coming to work prepared, right? So, so, and you know, try. I don't want to get too fragmented here, but to answer Mike's question, I want to trade with the direction of the market. It's easier to trade with the direction of the market than it is to trade against the market. Would you guys agree? Anybody tried the short in the, over the last couple of months? It's been nearly impossible to get a trade, a short trade to work, right? Even when the stock is miserable, it's terrible, nothing good about it. It's been hard to make money on the short side of the market. Okay. So Mike, when the market shifts and goes bearish, then I'm looking for put trades. Okay, but I don't want to trade against the market. Okay, real simple, real simple thing. Is it easier for a stock to go down if the market's going down or when the market's going up? Pretty simple answer, right? Stocks, when the market's falling, it's easier for a stock to fall to make money to the downside, okay? So I do try to stick with the general direction of the market because counter trend trading has never ever been successful for me because it requires you to pick tops and bottoms. Okay. So try to move with the direction of the market. Now that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, have an odd short here or there or something like that, that it's not a hard and fast rule. You could never short in an uptrending market, but you don't want to make a habit of it. You don't want that to be the predominant thing that you're looking at in the market. Because I can tell you from experience on this, how many of you ever been just sure maybe like right now, that this market is so overinflated it has to fall. And convince yourself it's got to go down, right? And trade to try and make money with it going down and then it doesn't go down. It's like going into a 15 round fight with Mike Tyson, thinking you're gonna come out a winner. Right? If you fight the tide of the market, you're likely going to lose. Okay. I hear what you're saying, Mike. Yeah. It we like to think that there's, you know, we're good enough in our technical analysis that we can always pick the direction of a trade. But I think if we just look at our trading record when we're trying to predict a turn, our win-loss ratio is not very good, right? Anytime we think we know something about the market, the market likes to impress on us that we really don't know that much. Am I wrong about that? When we try to predict and predict, you know, those kind of things, It hurts, doesn't it? Not only that, it damages our ego because we think we know something and particularly men, we will fight. Okay? This has to go down. It's got to go down. Do you see the fundamentals of this company? This thing is ridiculous. It's got to go down. And then it doesn't. And we'll fight harder. Well, I'm going to short some more. I'll show you. <laughs> nice tax deductions, that's right. <laughs> okay, so when we have those goals, remember, when, when we look down at that trade sheet, that goal sheet, <laughs> it 
it'll help us stay disciplined to our plan if we just say, look, you know, I I'm just trying to get the simple money here, right? One of the things that I made mistakes at over and over and over again is, you know, we've all done this, right? Stocks falling, oh, this has got to be a bottom, right? This is what counter trend traders do. Oh, this has got to be a bottom. And we get that buy signal or that big white candle that shows up in here. Oh, this is the bottom. I know this is the bottom. Has to be the bottom, right? This is too good a company. It's got to come back up. And then we buy that. And the next day it does this. That's what happens in counter trend trading. We try to outsmart the market, but when we try to buy long into downtrends, it's a really bad habit to get involved in. And it requires us to predict. You know, the fun thing is guys about my trading, I don't have to do that. I don't have to predict. If the stock is downtrending, I'm not worried about that stock at all until that stock breaks that up that downtrend and holds it as support and shows me that first higher low. That's the beginning of an uptrend. Until that occurs, I don't care about this over here. This over here is for the institutions to decide. Retail traders cannot find or put in the bottom on a stock. We can't do it. We don't have enough money. We're only about a 20% of the overall market total. Institutions have the predominance of the money. They decide when a stock bottom is in, not retail traders. And if I'm just patient and wait for the trend to start to show itself, I have a higher percentage winning trades. Isn't that what we want to have here? We want to have a higher percentage of winning trades. Not to be right, not to prove that we picked the perfect entry. Because at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. What matters is how many times you win and how many dollars you collect. Right? Picking the bottom is for the heroes. You know, big deal. I want the easy money. after the institutions have shown me that they want to hold a trend to the upside. And here's the other thing, guys. I see this all the time. I get this all the time. Stock's been trending up. Oh, it's, it, it's gone up too far. It has to come down. No, it does not. There is no rule that says it has to come down. How long has Amazon been trading, trending, guys? It's just been going up. How long has Microsoft been trending? Years. It's just been going up. And every time it rests, pulls back, or consolidates, it sets up an opportunity to get long and just let the institutions take it where they want to go. Okay, and if I know that I'm only looking for a certain amount every week, I can be picky about the trades I take. Do I want to take a trade in a stock that's trading erratically, trading all over the place? Let me ask you guys, if the stock is full, just bouncing around every day, got great big long wicks and tails in that trade, are your odds of winning on that trade good? Or are you giving up your edge to the market and saying, you know what, I just feel like getting beat up today. How about I just toss some money into this thing that's all over the map. It's in the news about every other day. How about I just toss into that because I just haven't had a good beating in a while. Isn't that true? We love to chase around, oh, it was in the news today. I gotta be on that. 
No, you don't. If they're whipping all over the place, you're giving your edge back to the market. Why would we want to do that? If we're trading these extremely highly volatile stocks, why would we want to give up our edge? Let me ask you guys, if you have a very highly volatile stock, let's just be rational and reasonable here for a second. If we have a highly volatile stock, are your odds of winning that trade increased or decreased? Yeah. Decreased. We're giving our edge back to the market. Sure, we can get enough of those right to make us think that we're pretty good at what we do. But if we look at our overall account because of that volatility, when we lose on those trades, we're not gaining ground in our account. We lose too many of those trades to continue to have that account grow, right? So we want to see that consistency in the trend, that cleanness of the trend. We don't need to be fighting everything that's in the news or chasing around everything that's in the market. We need to be looking for a couple of three base hits that can give us consistency. Growing our account, that's what we're here to do, right? Grow our account. Now, I've been asked this question before, what's too small a profit to take? Think about that question for a second. What's too small a profit to take? Guys, is it better to take a $1 profit than a $1 loss? I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a dollar than give somebody else a dollar. Okay, but if we have that goal in mind in a trade, if we know this is what we're shooting for, I'm shooting for a hundred bucks consistently in my trades or something, whatever your plan works out to be, this is what I'm working for. When the stock moves up and gives you that hundred bucks, what should your decision be? Yeah, go to the bank, right? Go to the bank. Now I'm gonna bring up another idea here with option trading that I think is important. Because when we option trade, we kind of forget about this. If we're a one contract trader, if you trade one contract at a time, and it's okay. A lot of people, you know, you, you start, I started with one contract trades. Think about that, Bubby. Have you ever heard anyone that's a professional money manager, anyone that's a professional money manager that makes 120% a year? Anybody. Is it possible to do? Sure, from time to time, it's possible to do that. Is it likely you're going to do that on a weekly basis? No. In fact, if you shoot for that Bubba, and this is going to sound real mean, but it's meant to shock people a little bit when I say this. If you trade that aggressively, you've got a better chance of ending up living in your mother's basement than getting rich. In trading it's too aggressive it's not realistic okay 
And it's probably going to put so much pressure on you, Bubba, that you're going to make really aggressive trades that are going to put you in harm's way. And maybe it's done that before. Maybe that's why you're shooting for 10% because you're trying to make back how much you've lost already. Okay. Well, I just go back. I mean, you can do what you want to do, Bubba, but I just want to ask you, I mean, think about that. If there's somebody that can actually do that month over month over month, everybody in the world would have their money there. Everybody, hey, take my money, please, and do that with my money, right? There would be no place else to go because that person would be the only one that has ever been able to achieve that consistently. It's not realistic, okay? It's going to hurt you. So let's think about this. If you're a one contract trader, you get into that stock trade, moves up, and you hit your gold dollars in that trade. Really, your only decision at that point should be to close that trade and capture your money. Okay, there shouldn't be a second question. Okay, now I get this question all the time. Well, what if I'm not trading two con or one contract, I'm trading two contracts? There's something interesting about going from one contract to two contracts. When you go to two contracts, you're trading 100% more. You guys get that? You've just doubled up. Okay. And I get this question. Well, what if I just take off one of these? So I take, I have one of these contracts I take off and I get half of my goal. So I've taken half of my goal. Is it gonna be really easy with that one additional contract, guys? to lose on that trade if that market reverses that overnight thing occurs that one half not only goes away but you end up taking a loss pretty high probability because it's doubled the size of the trade okay so think about this if you get into that nice trade and you're holding two contracts, when you reach your goal money in that trade, really the best answer for you with those two contracts is to close it and take the money. Okay. It's only after you can scale up to trade three contracts. Where I tell people that it's probably acceptable in this because when this moves up, if we can take two contracts out and get our goal money and trail that third contract to see if it'll go more, it's gonna be really hard for 33% of the trade to take all of that profit away, right? So once you cross over into that three contracts, then you can start thinking about doing some of that moving with the market, seeing if you can stretch that trade a little bit more. Okay, but until that time, you kind of want to be careful in um, giving up too much of that trade, okay, when that occurs. Okay, 33% is a whole lot easier to manage after you've taken your, your gold money out than a full 50% of the trade. All right, and I usually, what I did for a long, long time is when I graduated up where I was trading four contracts, 
I was trading four, I would take three off at my goal. That gave me even less chance that I was going to give this goal money back if I was going to try and stretch that up a little bit higher. Okay. Because for me, the process of winning in trading is all about managing that account, right? We have to manage that money. We want to see that grow. And we need it to grow with some consistency because if we don't have consistency, how are we ever going to go full time? I hear this from people all the time. They, they'll, they'll puff out their chest, you know. Yeah, but hey, you know what? I, I, I got a 250% return on a trade. And I say, awesome. You know, that's great. Congratulations. But what I really want to say is, okay, now repeat that. It's about impossible to repeat it, right? Repeat it. Do it again. And you know what happens when people do that? When they're always doing this, they're shooting for that, they're puffing, uh, hey, I'm the hero trade. Look at how much money I made on this trade. What that usually tells me is that they're losing 70% of their trades or more because they're always trying to swing for a home run. Their account's not growing. In fact, the more they puff out their chest and talk about this, the more I usually know they're in pain, lots of pain, because their account's not growing. They have one trade to hang their hat on. See, that doesn't impress me, guys. I mean, it's wonderful. It happens. Somebody, you get that great big trade. We've had great big trades, okay? Great returns and that kind of stuff, and that's awesome. It's great. But I would never say I can repeat that on the next trade. Because what I'm going to do is I'm always going to, I'm going to say thank you very much when I get a trade like that. Thank you very much, Mr. Market. Now my job is to think about next week's goal. What is next week's goal? That's what I'm working for. Because if I don't focus on that goal, I have no chance of reaching my annual return that I'm trying to achieve. Does that make sense, guys? Hero trading it's going to hurt you a bunch. Okay, work for the consistency. And here's the fun thing. And this is what a lot of folks in right way options and, and folks that I've worked with over the years, type a Y in if you guys agree with this. Once you've kind of got onto this concept of taking profits, your accounts are finally growing. And not only that, you're enjoying trading a whole lot more than you used to. Because you have a focus, you have a direction. We know what we're here to do. We have fun with our trading, we enjoy it a whole lot more because we're working for that consistency. Exactly. None, none of that. None of that banging your head against the wall every day. Believe me, I got the dents in my forehead to show to prove it. <laughs> that time when you, you know, those times when you want to be proud of your trading and you talk about your winning trades, but when you look at yourself in the mirror, you feel like an absolute zero, right? For what's going on. As a matter of fact, you don't even want to tell your spouse what's happening. So we have to fix that problem. We have to focus in 
on that plan, that goal, because goals help us stay focused. They help us stay in a direction. They help us stay disciplined to our trading plan. Can you guys see how goals are so important to get you to that end result? We know where we, you know, this is our account here. Okay, we know where this is, and we know we want to be up here in a specific period of time. But now we have a plan to step by step move us up there to do that. Okay, we have to take those steps. To eat that elephant, we take one bite at a time. Make sense? So what I wanna leave you guys with tonight is this idea of how important it is to build that, that plan that you feel has validity, that you can actually see that being achieved. Okay? Um, I, this happens to me a lot, Bubba, and, and, and I don't mean to beat up on you or anything here, but it happens to me a lot. I'll, I'll get someone that will get a hold of me and, hey, I've got $10,000. I need to make $5,000 a month. Can you help me make that happen? Oftentimes, I'll say, I'll tell you what, just write me a check for $5,000 and then send me a Christmas card on Christmas because I saved you half of your money if you're trying to trade like that. Okay. It is, Gwen. Um, I, I have worked with a doctor that was trading $4 million. Okay. We set goals. He'd been losing and losing and losing and losing. We set goals and put together a plan. In his very first month, his very first month, he came back to the coaching session, he was so excited because he'd made $100,000 that month in his account. And he did it by just taking those, now it seems, it seems silly to say bite-sized trades, but those bite-sized profits that he was taking based on the size of his account to return to him that kind of money Okay, the math doesn't change, right? 20% a year is 20% a year. Okay, so, and, and by the way, Gwen, is it okay, I said 20%, is it okay to say, I've never even come close to 20% my entire life. I would be, I would feel like a superhero if I could make 12% a year then make that your plan and your goal and figure out how you're going to do that. Okay. Because is there any difference here, Gwen, in that $25,000 account trying to hit $60 trade? Okay. And just scaling that up to a larger size trade? Two contracts and it's 120 a month. If, he, if you scale it up to 10 contracts, $600, that's $1,200 a week. Right?
you just scale it up it's the same trade okay Gwen if you're trading stocks only then it's really not realistic to shoot for 20 percent okay think about how far a stock has to move to go to 20 percent you can do it you can have 20 percent returns okay but think about this year has this year provided us 20 percent returns and you know think about it if you're holding a long stock well first we lost 20 percent and then we gained back 20 well 24 percent or whatever it is that we've done we've had historic moves but we're not even back to even yet okay so maybe you need to bring that goal into something more realistic something that fits that's awesome Gwen that that tells me that you must be pretty aggressive and you must be working pretty diligently on your trading and that's great I've got no problem with that at all because of the wild moves of the market that's certainly possible okay if that feels like a realistic goal to you year over year then set that as your goal if you think that hey I can achieve this because of my discipline my work ethic and everything I'm doing in in my market then set some goals and see if that fits you how much risk are you going to have to take is that going to work for you okay use that as a goal use that as a, say and just work the, the math out it becomes incredibly obvious after a period of time guys that it's just a matter of mathematics is there any difference here on this trade somebody trading one contract to get six sixty dollars or someone trading 10 contracts to get six hundred dollars or someone trading 20 contracts and making this $1,200 it's the same trade it's just scaling up as your account grows to continue those kind of gains and returns okay one thing I want to caution you on is to not scale up too quickly okay we have to grow our account we have to build we have to build our account and build our confidence that we are gaining consistency in that trading okay but you know for anyone like Gwen that says hey I've I've achieved 20 percent returns for a few years then I would definitely be putting a 20 percent target out there this is what I'm shooting for on an annual basis because I've proven I can do that and then work your goals down so that you're achieving that on a weekly basis And stock trading okay I trade a rather large account and I do so a lot of longer term holds and I can tell you I've reached 20% a couple of times in my career but it's not normal for me I'm not that aggressive okay so I know if I'm just a stock only trader and only long I'm probably not going to shoot that high personally that doesn't mean that you can't if you've proved that okay so it's all about your experience in your trading and whether or not that is a logical and achievable without becoming so aggressive that you're risking so much that when that market goes against you hard it doesn't it doesn't gut you out ok 
Okay, makes sense. You know, one of the things that, the last thing I'm gonna talk about here, one of the things when I came to trading is I was always searching for the holy grail, so to speak, okay? I wanted the perfect stock setup. I wanted the perfect combination of option, or not options, combination of indicators that were gonna give me just those winning trades. I wanted the perfect scan that was just going to return to me the, you know, it's like the easy button. It's only going to return to me the two trades I need to be thinking about this week. Anybody ever been caught in that trap? And not just caught in that trap for a little while, but spun your wheels for years and years and years in that? searching for that holy grail well let me tell you what the holy grail is guys and no one wants to hear this because it's boring it's not sexy the holy grail in trading is your plan and your discipline to follow it That's the Holy Grail. Because if you can build a plan that brings you consistency, you can actually plan your success. Make sense? All of that other stuff is clouding your vision of being successful in the market. Get your plan, your process, set your goals, and stick to your plan. Guys, if there's one thing about plan, your plan that will help you more than anything, it's going to be accountability. I want to challenge you. Now, I did this with my wife. I went to my wife, explained, and she hates, she, she hyperventilates when she sees me trade. But I taught her enough about what my plan and my goals, what my, what my rules were, and I asked her to hold me accountable. Now, you want a gut check. Have your spouse hold you accountable to your trading plan. Have someone that holds you accountable. Okay? Because it's so easy, isn't it, when we're in our room? We're in our trading room, nobody's around us, it's quiet. It's so easy to just break our rules, right? Nobody's watching, I don't have to tell anybody, right? It's easy. Do you think business around the world would get along if everybody just did whatever they wanted to do and broke their rules all the time. How long would you how long do you think if you work for my trading firm or Ed's trading firm and we give you a process to follow it and you choose not to follow it, how long are you going to be working for me? I'm a little bit nicer than Ed. I might give you one warning. <laughs> I'm just joking there. <laughs> you see what I mean? We have to be that tough boss on ourselves. And if you can have someone hold you accountable to your goals, your, your plan, your process that you're following, that's going to be the best way to achieve anything. Okay. He is a great guy. I'm just teasing him. I didn't know if, I don't even know if he's still listening. <laughs> Does that make sense, guys? Be that tough boss. This is what I do. This is what I'm here to do. That's why I write that stuff down. That's why I have a trading plan on my desk. That's why I follow it. 
because I've committed myself to sticking to it because I know this, my plan is there to protect me from me. Anybody here agree that you're your own worst enemy in your trading? My plan protects me from me. My plan helps me make money and it helps me protect my capital. That means I have to follow my plan. I can't deviate from it. I got to stick to it. That's my plan. That's the discipline that you need to come to the market with. And the market will respect someone that trades with discipline. Okay? It will not respect someone that is all over the place, doesn't have a focus in their trading. It will just take your money. Okay? So I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, uh, Dave, yeah, this is recorded. As soon as I get a chance, I will render this. I will put it up on the YouTube channel. It'll be available. But if you guys, if, if you've listened to this all the way through here, I just want to challenge you to these things because I can tell you in my trading, once I got serious and turned this into a business, focused on a plan, a process, what I do, what I don't do, everything in my life changed. I want to challenge you to do that because it's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. All right. Is it easy? It's not easy. But it's worth doing. All right. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome evening. Thanks for being here. Truly appreciate it. <clears throat> you guys take care. I want to wish you great success tomorrow <clears throat> in the market. We got a crazy day with a whole bunch of earnings. We've got FOMC tomorrow. We've got, you know, more rhetoric. So it's probably going to be coming out about it either uh, on a stimulus plan, all kinds of things that could move this market around. Well, I should say jerk this market around. So we're going to have to be on our toes and we're going to have to be focused. All right. Flexible and focused because anything can reverse this market. Anything is possible with all of the data that we've got coming at us. So be careful, be cautious, be focused, be flexible and be safe. We'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning with the Morning Market Prep video. You guys all take care. Have a great evening. Thanks, guys.